Do you have a purist mentality and did the uh, digital animation drive you crazy? Because are you like, oh, because it used to be hand drawn and now it's like I digital. haven't looked at any of the people talking about it. Yeah. Right out of the gate, I was just like, this animation looks whack compared to the original stuff. It looks whack. I don't hate it. But one thing I noticed is as soon as like uh, you see those original characters, you're like, yeah, this is like Beavis and Butthead. The, the animation is a little different, but as soon as they're gone from the movie, every new character you see looks like a completely different like art style. Like It looks like they came from Archer. Remember that I, show? Yeah, yeah. Revival House Network. What's up, gang? Another episode of Cinema Enema. It's been a minute. Zach, myself, Aaron here. We are here to talk about some bullshit that probably really doesn't matter, but just wanted to check in with everybody. Zach and I, at the top of the show, we'll just kind of shoot the breeze, talk about what we've been watching. Anything I'm noting in the news, we'll chat about it. And the back half, we're going to dissect a movie that is relatively new for both of us. Uh, Usually, we take turns picking a film uh, this week, I chose a film, Dog Pound, for Zach to watch. Uh, so Again, he's fresh Aaron, faced on it. Our boy Aaron picked his favorite movie about fucking dogs. Fucking, this is about a bunch of guys fucking pounding the shit out of dogs. Take, it's about like fucking the, the <clears throat> behind the scenes of like, you know, people do the fucking the, the dog fights. They fucking, this is even under more underground where they, they fuck the dogs. Michael Vick had something to do with it. Hashtag. That everything he said is accurate. Uh, so before we get into all that, yeah. So like I said, it's been a minute. I can't even remember the last episode we did of this. I know we've done uh, a lot of streaming. We've done a couple of Mac and Zach came gang offshoots. We've done a commentary or two. So we're back. I don't remember the last cinematic we did, but it's been a while. So there's probably some flicks we haven't talked about. Probably gonna be behind on some news. There's really not a whole lot of news. Uh, you know, the only thing I can think of that came out in the last month. Is all that scream nonsense about Nev Campbell not uh, coming back due to to money disputes or whatever? Good for her. I mean, oh, I didn't hear anything about that. Uh, fucking, I want didn't. my I want my Nev. I want fucking Nev Campbell and Neve from fucking Catfish. They need to meet up in some way. Fucking the Nev and the Neve. I just realized no, they, fucking, you got you got to look on your face like, oh god, he's got to go off on a tangent. It, well, the, not just a tangent. This tangent again. He's gone on the Nev Neve tangent every time Scream comes up. Uh, no, wouldn't it be funny if Neve was the killer? That would be amazing. And nobody would get it but you. Oh yeah. Like, oh, it's just for that guy on that podcast that's always talking about we need to come together. No, right it, so, basically, she was written into this new script, and I guess they were taking it to New York. Literally, Ghostface takes Manhattan. And oh, amazing. And what, are they going to shoot most of it in Vancouver? It's going to be on a <laughs> boat the whole time. Courtney Cox, Courtney Cox is in it. She's signed on, agreed, all that stuff. All the original, all the cast from that first uh, requel, like all the same people are going to be in it, except for Dewey, of course. Just bring uh, Dewey back. Just bring Dewey back. Just fucking pretend like fucking we did. Who cares? Bring him back like Jason with electricity. Like dig him up. Oh, yeah. Get Horshack. Oh, yeah. Get Horshack to dig him up. Chad. Uh, no. So anyway, and then Sydney was supposed to be integral to this as well. But uh, she dropped out just because uh, negotiations, like she said she wasn't getting paid what she felt she was worth. And so they're probably going to have some rewrites to do. But who knows? Maybe that's just playing hardball. And, uh, you know, they'll they'll come back at her with like, you know what? We're going to bend over because they're probably literally going to have to rewrite some shit. And it's, maybe it's not worth it. I don't know. But uh, they tried to pay her scale. Probably. Like you're an aging actress. Take it. You know, you want it. It's what were you than, doing bes- b- before we brought the screams back? Conventions, yeah. Like, hey, fucking don't don't hate the player. Don't hate the player. Well, I'm actually kind of shocked by any of it because I kind of thought the last movie was a passing of the torch. That's what a requel is, and I thought they were. I th- I thought we were moving on from those classic characters, and that's exactly we were gonna- what you would have thought. That but this is scream where they fucking take what you think and they say fuck you, exactly. So, 
I thought it would have been totally fine and normal if Courtney Cox and Nev Campbell weren't even in the next one and it was moving on, especially with like New York City and stuff like that, too, which is fine. It's like take it out of Woodboro at this point. Woodboro. I said Wilboro. But anyway, uh, but I would say, but now it seems like they're going the Force Awakens route where they're going to kill a legacy character each movie. So now it's like in the next one, Courtney Cox is going to get it. And then maybe Sydney will get it on the third one. But okay. anyway, I want, me some I, Sunday. I want I want the fucking uh, the scream and the craft meetup where fucking she's back and she's wearing all goths out fucking Stacy ass fucking uh, witchy shit. Oh, yeah. The only other thing, uh, not a lot of news. Man, there's that new movie, uh, Black Phone, that has some killer wearing a Jeffrey Epstein looking mask. Is he supposed to look like Jeffrey Epstein? I don't know. Have you seen, you know what I'm talking about? I know I've heard of it, and that title is just so generic. It could be about anything. Well, I guess it's a Joe Hill book, right? Stephen King's son and oh. the Black Phone. But it does. I you know I did look generic as shit. Then I remembered, oh, it's a Joe Hill book, and I think that book had some clout. So who knows? Maybe it'll be all right. I know a lot of people are going to see it, but look up look up stills of the movie, and you'll see the killer. And it looks like a guy wearing a Jeffrey Epstein mask, doesn't it? Look it up. Okay. Well, why are they waiting so long to make that a movie if they have it yet? Why isn't that not already a slasher? Anyway. He's killing uh, you with like, he's like a pizza guy dressed as Epstein. He's fucking chasing you around. Not uh, earth shattering news or anything, but uh, just of note, as far as stuff getting released, Shout Factory's releasing the OG trilogy of the Child's Play movies all in 4K. And, uh, you know, I we probably all own those movies a million different ways from Sunday. All different formats. I do. But I'm a sucker and I pre-ordered them. I pre-ordered all three of them because uh, I likes the 4K and I likes the packaging Screen Factory is doing for those 4Ks. And the big thing is they really did come out swinging with the special features. Like some movies are kind of disappointments. Like they really couldn't get anybody to play ball on these special editions and stuff like that. These new And uh, everybody, they got all kinds of great commentaries, all kinds of really cool interviews. Uh, looks like some featurettes and stuff for each one. So uh, it seems really cool. So I got those. Um, and they well, have, you're going to get those and there's going to be a fuck up on it. They're going to have to send you replacements. Fucking probably. That's, that's the fucking, that's the name of the game. We're, we're in a DLC generation. I'm surprised they don't just fucking give you a disc that is worthless and then fucking let you stream the movie at this point. Fucking Isn't weird. that, but you know, why aren't we at that point where we can't just release updates and upload your, di update your disc instead of getting sent a new disc, you know, like video games do it. Fucking if they started doing that, it would be worthless to buy them, probably. Yeah. And it would be it'd be just as bad as video games. Video games is really bad the way they do it. You'd have day one you there's always day one patches. They always rush shit out to meet the street date, and then they always rush then to make a day one patch. Um uh, <clears throat> which is bullshit. So yeah, that probably wouldn't be good, but it takes forever for these people to get back to you on replacement discs. I finally got my Escape from LA replacement disc. I think a couple weeks back and that was months ago. <clears throat> Sorry, fucking frog in my throat. <clears throat> you are yeah, fucked. Kang gang. <laughs> and then what is it? I'm also waiting uh shit, what is the other one that everybody was talking about that was all fucked up and I bought it? I can't remember, but there's one I still don't even have a response on. Like they don't even know what they're doing. Uh it's been months and they still don't they'll just let everybody know once they got it figured out replacement discs. I can't I don't know why I can't fucking remember what movie it was. But anyway, it's stupid. And that's the case where um, Escape from L.A. was an audio issue. Like, I, I think a basic person wouldn't even notice it, to be honest with you. I think it really only affects if you have like a seven point fucking two surround, whatever. But uh, this one, what, what movie is it? It's where they literally play a scene twice. Like it, re it repeats. Amazing. And I think that's all it is. But oh, it's uh, 12 Monkeys. That's what it is. The 12 Monkeys 4K. Anyway, uh, Zach, is there anything of, of note in the news that you felt like discussing? Yay, oh, nay. There is nothing in the news that I felt like discussing. Yeah, it's nothing. all shit. So we're going to get into what we've been watching lately. Zach, you can start us off if you want and kind of go through your list. I watched uh, Eric Andre Legalize Everything special. Fucking liked it. Gave it an 8 out of 10. Very much like his show. Fucking I love that show. Can't wait for it to come back. Is but that on I, Netflix? It is. I fucking I watched Candyman. Fucking uh, fucking not very good, but it's the best sequel to a Candyman series, which is funny. I watched that as well, and I'll go over my thoughts. 
Fucking, later. I watched Nosferatu the Vampire with our boy and uh, fucking uh, the uh, Joe Bob, Joe Bob, and Me too. Nosferatu the fucking the original. Watched the double feature. Which which is better? Which is better? We all know. We all know. Are you asking me, or is this rhetorical? Fucking it knows for all to the vampire. Fucking it, it wins. They fucking they took basically what's so great about knows for all to. It's not a great movie, the story and everything. But fuck, I I don't even think like Dracula is that great of a story at all. Anyway, so fucking basically, I can I can easily say knows for all to the vampire. Fucking Warner Herzog. Fucking, uh, it's the best Dracula adaptation because they managed to take the original, which is really only iconic because of those one couple shots in the movie where fucking Max Shrek is just looking like a fucking icon. Talk about fucking sex symbol. Fucking people put Madonna on a pistol. You can't see Max Shrek as the fucking Nosferatu, not know that. Fucking the original iconic. is iconic. It gets still creepy. Like the imagery is creepy in that original still to this day. And Max Shrek is still pretty gnarly if max shrek was at your front door at night and he rang the doorbell and you opened it up you shit yourself uh now i'm i guess i'll jump in if i've watched the same shit as you we can just talk about it here what was the first what did you say first fucking uh not eric andre what else was it oh candy man really quick I'll, I'll give my two cents on candy man before we move on to nosferatu uh candy man i pretty much agree with zach it's the best sequel i don't know how high a bar that is of all the Candyman movies, it's one of these things where it kind of did the requel, like is really hip. But I'm actually not. I don't hate the requel trend that we have. I think the requel trend is way more preferred than the reboot fucking trend we had like crazy. Um, I'm, you know, as long as it ties in, I'm okay with breathing fresh air into it. As far as this movie, I thought it was. I probably liked it a little better than you did, but I didn't. Uh, let me see here. What did I give? I gave Candyman a six out of ten. Um, but I, I, that's probably what I gave the original. A five, it's a five on a bad day, a six on a good day. Right. Um, but anyway, the new movie, I thought it looked cool. I, I, I thought I, it's just the whole third act is really fucking confusing. Right. Like they're trying to, I, what, I, when the movie, I, I, when I the got movie, lost and I was just like, I don't even fucking care. And I was rewinding it. I got well, lost and I was like, oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> and spoiler alert, I'm going to spoil it. So if you don't want to spoiler, you have three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna spoil it. When when I when it spoiled, and all of a sudden you saw Tony Todd in that alleyway, like you're like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? It's so random. And then I I did re- rewind it <laughs> after I watched that ending. I rewound it a good fifteen minutes, and I watched like the last fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. again. See, and then you you for you fell out of it too, and your brain was just like, oh well. Because it's just like, uh, we already did, we already got to figure it out. And then, like, fuck, that happens at the end, and that tricks you into walking out thinking you're satisfied, I think. I think they tricked us. And anybody that likes that movie got tricked into it, I think. Well, and, and I just, I rewound it, and then after I watched the third act again, I understood the second time what they were trying to do. I get it. But it was so fucking muddled. Like, there's no way people got that on the first watch or without a little bit more context. But so what they were trying to do, the whole um, candy man is omnipresent. Like, there's all these different candy mans and he's a ri- I like it in theory, what they were doing. It's kind of cool. It was just a fucking mess. <laughs> and it wasn't done well. And the twist of uh, that one guy that works in the laundromat <laughs> being being the guy that wants to create. We need candy man. That, w- that kind of went into corny territory. <laughs> for a second but like i said i think that whole thing could have been told a little bit better and it would come off better so i don't hate it it was just a fucking mess but yeah i still think it was a six out of ten like i enjoyed my time with it enough i guess mm. you i know? don't hate it either it was fucking five out of ten there was some cool gore it looked cool yeah I, the actors were fine it was just a mess uh and really quick to comment on uh nosferatu the vampire I thought it was awesome. I watched it with Joe Bob as well. And uh, I gave it an 8 out of 10 as well. I thought the movie was stunning. It beautifully shot. It was really, really something to look at. I lo- And it's, it's just, I know it's European, so it sounds stupid for me to say, but it looks super European. I love how it looks. And uh, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of like... Um, coming when you watch when you watch these movies like uh phenomena and stuff like that and some of those argento they have this european cinematography that's just really gorgeous 
And uh, the Werner Herzog, Herzog movie was kind of like that too. And I don't hate the Dracula story. I, I haven't read the book, but I know the story. I mean, even if you haven't read the book, I think everybody's seen some adaptation of Dracula. Um, but it's simple, but I, I dig it. And, it, and it's funny because it's essentially just a Castlevania <laughs> book. You know, sure. uh, Castlevania, because obviously Dracula is public domain now. I think that's why Castle, it, it, it was probably public domain when the first Fucking, Castlevania came you out. You could have Dracula. We'll just keep Nosferatu. Let's just keep calling him that. That's cooler. It looks yeah. cooler. So I don't know at what point it became public domain, obviously between Nosferatu and Castlevania, but I'm willing to Funny, bet when Castlevania came out. By the time this movie was remade, they had the rights to just call him Dracula, but it's like, fucking, we gotta, we're going to weave it into the story with this one. They're like, fucking, no, no, Nosferatu was like a fucking different name. He goes by, he goes by different names known to many. Fucking Chad, big king. But I, I want to say it's funny though. Like Castlevania is essentially, a, you know, Dracula is like basically a Castlevania book. And when you, I've I haven't read the book, but I've read a lot of pieces of the book online. And I guess they connect. Castlevania went out of their way to connect a lot of Easter eggs and shit to make sure it was canon. Like for example, um, when you play Bloodlines on the Sega Genesis, one of the characters you play as. He's from Texas. He's an American, and he's the direct descendant of the character that actually kills Dracula. Um, because they get their little squad together, and they all break into the castle, and they kill Dracula. The only guy that dies in the movie is the American. It's a guy from Texas, and the guy you play as in Bloodline is his like, uh, I guess it would be his grandson or great grandson. And technically, if if they they made Castlevania canon with Dracula, the the book of Dracula comes way after Castlevania. Right, because Castlevania is hundreds of years old. Dracula is a little bit more modern in scope. Uh, what you know, and so it's it's pretty interesting what they did there. I don't mind Dracula as as a story. It's 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 fine by me, and it's cool that it's public domain. I mean, it's just it's something people can do a lot with, and obviously Hollywood has. You get a lot of these really stupid movies like Dracula Untold, and just you know they they kind of beat up the the IP, but anyway, beat so up that, the ip. They beat the ip. Beat the ip. That that basically means we can do a Mac and Zach meet Dracula movie, just like a uh, old school oh, yeah. Universal Abbott oh, yeah. Costello. You know. Oh, yeah. All fucking, right, continue. I watched Paddington, fucking kids movie from fucking uh, 2014, the British movie. Where fucking it's basically Joe Dirt remade with a teddy bear, pretty much, almost. What do you think oh. of that movie? I've heard things about the Paddington movies. It was fun. I gave it a seven. They it uh, is seven. Uh, Paddington 2 is like a running gag in that Nicolas Cage movie, you know, the the way to massive talent or whatever. Did you ever see that, by the way? I need to watch that. It's really yeah. funny. And and Paddington 2 is is a is a running gag. So you'll I won't ruin that. But I watched the new fucking the Norm Macdonald. Nothing special uh, special on edibles. Fucking I got 20 minutes into it before I realized it was happening over Skype. It was amazing. Yeah, it was really nothing special. You have to have uh, context, yeah. I mean, it it wasn't so much like he was delivering stand-up because there's no audience to bounce off of. He literally just wanted his act to get out there. He's like, well, I worked hard on this. I don't want it to just not ever materialize. I, I took it as more like, hey, I'm reading my act, you know. So you're not getting the full effect, but continue. Exactly. Fucking, and then it cuts to Dave Chappelle and all these people that were watching. They were like, fucking... That was genius, man. Oh, that was genius. It's like, why didn't we hear you laughing the whole time? You were sitting there quiet the whole time. <laughs> That's well, what I want. I'm joking. I know that they didn't actually want to put fucking get their reaction. They could have though. That but it fun. really, but it really, it almost like I said. It, I think it, it. Fuck. How do I say this? He it did. It wasn't a stand up. He wasn't doing mm-hmm. it in 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 doing the everything uh, punchy and the timing like a stand up. He was literally just reading his act like this is what I wanted to do. Uh, so I could see how someone like Dave Chappelle wouldn't necessarily have the stand up reaction of, oh, that was funny in the timing. But he'd be like, that's genius. I could see how that works. And he could spin it in his head and imagine what it would pl- be like. To I do was it. just playing. I was just playing. Fucking, I was building up to the joke because I was like, fucking, it was so funny. Why weren't you laughing the whole time? We didn't hear any laughs. Gotcha. Pretending like fucking like, you know, the silence we heard was their reaction. Okay. Like, uh, they aired it for the audience. 
Fucking, they could have done that. Is what I was saying. I watched the fucking the streaming wars of South Park, the newest special. Remember when South Park used to be a a season? Like they put out a season every year, except for an episode every year. That was fucking crazy. So it wait, was a six I, I, I know they. Well, for a long time, their seasons have been like a running storyline, right? And back in the day, it wasn't like that. They were just purely episodic. Now it's like a running narrative that goes throughout the whole season. Uh, but now I notice that on Paramount Plus, it's almost like a movie. So are they actually just titling the seasons different shit now? Like the streaming wars and stuff? Fucking, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm fucking... These motherfuckers, they they got too used to working from home. They don't want to go back. They fucking go. They go do a writer writers retreat, and they're like, "Fucking, we we got one. Uh, we came out with another uh, enough stuff for one episode. Fucking, I think we're good. Fucking, uh, let's." Are, just- <laughs> are they still airing on Comedy Central? Are these in addition to the regular show, or is this the supplement? Is this the show? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I don't know what's going on either. Okay, continue. Fucking, I watched the entire series. Uh, two seasons of a show called Pen Fifteen from Hulu. It's a fucking uh, uh, comedy coming of age uh, uh, show, and I've been enjoying. I fucking I finished it. It's fucking. I really enjoyed it. Fucking eight out of ten at least. Could go up to a nine if they nail this night this third season. Apparently, third season is gonna be last season. Is that is it a joke like penis Pen Fifteen? Exactly. I don't know is why it, it's called that. Fucking. But is that? But is? But is it? Is it like a sex show? Is it? Spo- I don't know the context. I've never seen the it's show. A but coming of age, fucking about kids in uh, middle school. But pen. Fi- it has to be pen. Fifteen clearly looks like course. penis on paper. Course. Course. Okay. Anyway, but I don't know if that's what the it, like. Oh, is that what the the schools called? I don't know why it's called. That. Just just random, I guess, just to be funny. Okay. I watch pistol. The fucking uh, the TV miniseries by Danny Boyle about the Sex Pistols. Any good? I fucking I really enjoyed it. Fucking uh, I don't remember if I really enjoyed it or not. I I uh, well, yeah, I gave it an eight out of ten. I put fucking seven out of ten on here first on the IMDb, but then I I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Fucking how much of this list were you on edibles? Just one. Okay. <laughs> Just the one. Okay. Fucking uh, fucking pistol is a fucking eight eight, eight uh, episode. Fuck. See, I think if they're gonna make these uh these shows about fucking uh these biopics, they should do it like this. Like fucking now, like you're not you know limited to like two hours and twenty. Because like nowadays, it's like oh, it's got to be long. We gotta finish as mu- fit as much as we can. And like now, they try to get away with like fucking two hours, two and a half hours. It's like. Fuck that. We're going to make a TV miniseries. It's going to be six episodes. That's that's all we needed. That's all we needed. They got one album. They made an album, and then they, they fell apart. But fucking, like, fucking, uh, that, that that album is still, it's still pretty good. It still bops. It still bops. And I, I enjoyed the show. I enjoyed the show. And it, it was weird, because as I was watching it, I kept getting the uh, the idea that, like, fucking... This isn't like, I'm not watching a recreation. This isn't a TV show. This is just the original foot. Like whenever I'm watching them reenact these classic uh, live scenes and fucking like, and I'm pretty sure they did what uh, Queen did where they took uh, live recordings and used them. They were lip syncing and they just reenacted the, uh, the stuff. It was like, see fucking what's going on here. Is it like the whole the whole look of it had like a really dreamy almost look to it. Like fucking remember how you brought it up while we were watching the screen four? You're like, this has a dream look. Something about this one. They shot it in like the square aspect ratio to to make sense with the time it takes place in. Fucking it looks like a uh, weird and dreamy or something. And I was watching, I was like, fucking, this isn't fucking a recreation. This is the original footage. They used an AI, like the fucking, uh, like Go- uh, Disney did with fucking, uh, that, uh, Beatles documentary. And the fucking, the, the fact that it looks different. I was going to ask you about that. I was going <laughs> to ask you about that. It, <laughs> the fact that it looks different is just fucking, uh, it, it, it's just, uh, my mind playing Wait, tricks on me. So what's up with the Beatles? Did you watch that Beatles documentary? I didn't. What were you saying that Disney did with it? Fucking! I was saying that that I got the that idea in my head while I was watching Pistol. This isn't a reenactment. I'm watching the original footage. They just upgraded it to be in HD, and cool. they fucking they look uglier because I'm just seeing John. Lydon I gotta say, on in, that in HD on that topic though, you should watch the 
the Beatles doc. It's uh, it's insane. It's insane to watch. And I've never mm. seen like the restoration they did is insane. It looks fucking amazing. It looks like. If you have a good enough setup and shit like that, and your TV's cool, dude. It looks like John and Paul and George and Ringo are in your room with you. It almost looks like 2022. It's so good looking, and it's just really John weird. John and Paul live, y'all. I'm talking big breastuses and tight vestuses, my friend. It, it, it just seems so weird because you're just in the room with them as they're workshopping these songs on the fly, and they're coming together like nothing. Like it's just, it's so insane. So. It's worth watching too, by the way. But go ahead. Fuck, fuck them. They were a band like a p measly ten years. Fucking pistol, the Sex Pistols. They were a band for like a month and a half. <laughs> That's how you know they're better. Fucking uh, the basketball diaries I watched with fucking uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Everybody he talks sucks about a dick. This. Everybody talks about this shit. Everybody's like, fucking, that's my Leo DiCaprio movie. Fucking nobody talks about Leo DiCaprio doesn't talk about it. Fucking, it's hard to find for a long time. It came out on Blu-ray, immediately went out of print. I was trying to get it, but fucking, uh, I didn't. So, like, I watched it, and I was like, this is literally a fucking after school special. They, they, uh, this is a psyop. This isn't really based on a true story. They came up with that to justify just giving us an after school special and, and making it seem cool to watch because it's like, Oh fucking Leo DiCaprio. He has a fantasy where he takes a gun into this school. It's so fucking crazy, man. It was edgy, but this is an after school special. Does, this is did, dog shit. Does, no. does, does Leo DiCaprio suck a dick in that movie? Who sucks the dick? I don't remember. So, Some, something, it, something, something, with, something with drugs, something sucking dick, dick for he drugs. He gets into drugs. Fucking, uh, he 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 knows how to do it, man. He knows how to get the good to fucking. Oh yeah, it was the coach. The coach comes on to him, and like fucking exactly fucking. I I didn't hate it. Fucking I I, I gave it a seven, but I was the, ready to fucking like this is gonna blow my mind. Everybody wait, talks about this. The coach came on to him and sold him drugs, or just sold Hell him. Hell yes. Is that is that why? What was the, he what said? Was, come over. He said, "Come over here, kid. I saw you in that fucking critters movie. Fucking what was." <laughs> What was in it for Leo to suck the dick? Fucking, he he would give him the drugs. He's like, hey, I'll give you, I'll give you a blunt if you fucking if you s smoke this spliff. Oh my! Spoke goodness. this spliff. No, that didn't really happen. I don't really remember because it's been so long. We're going back a while. It's been a while since we've done these. Like, Less yeah. than zero. Robert Downey Jr. did it first. He sucked a dick for coke before anybody else. Chad James Spader fucking got him on that junk too. Anyway. The Killing of America. I watched documentary. Came out in the seventies. Fucking, it, it was big. It was kind of fucking like, oh, you got to see the Killing of America. It's about like fucking America and like how violent we are compared to the rest of the world. The fucking uh, all the shit, the, the prison population, all that shit. Fucking, I enjoyed it. I watched it on YouTube. Fucking, uh, probably a lot of the shit in the in the documentary is completely out of date. No, uh, now because it came out. It's in 81, but it was still really fucking uh, crazy to watch. Uh, I, I recommend it. It's on, it's on YouTube, although probably illegally. I gave it <laughs> eight out of 10. Miss Libby's car is green. Hell yeah. Fucking Beavis and Butthead do the universe. Fucking let's go off. All right. So we'll go off on that. Uh, I guess you could start, man. I, I thought it was on par, I guess, with the first one, but I don't think the first one aged well. I don't think Beavis and Butthead in general ages very well. For me, I, I was being kind to it. It was either a five or a six. I landed on a six, but it could easily just be a five. The thing is, is it had funny jokes, l l chuckle moments scattered throughout, but I thought in the middle, it just fucking meandered. There was a period in the middle where it was just really lulling for me. But what, what were your thoughts? Fucking, uh, well, I was watching it. First thing I'm thinking is like, fucking, uh, I, I, I was thinking like, man, this really does. It reads like it could uh, be like a loose jumping off point. Like this might be like fucking a soft reboot for a series or something. And if that's the case, I, I, I hope so. It, it, fuck, I think because that because that, that easily better. plants them in the modern day. Yeah, yeah. I think for that'll these. work. That'll work better for the style here. I think I just I think I like Beavis and Butthead better in the TV show 
style where it's like short bursts and then they fucking they're watching a music video and fucking mocking it and then fucking back to a little story uh, i i always just prefer i really liked when they brought the show back a couple years ago fucking uh yeah, fucking, I wish, uh, I was really looking forward to, like, fucking, they're going to put out this new movie, and then they're going to put, fucking, uh, Paramount Plus, they did this shit where they were, like, fucking, uh, putting all the old ones back together, because they're going to put those back up, and we're going to see what the original videos, but it was, like, fucking, that was not, that did not live up to what we thought, fucking, it's just a couple what episodes I, they put up. Wait, 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 what happened with that? So, wait, I thought they were putting up the entire series again with the episodes back in. That didn't happen? Unless, fucking, uh, they're going to slowly do it. Like, there's just a couple of that, them now. That's, do they call it, is it labeled differently, like Beavis and Butthead Redux or something? Because Beavis and Butt was already on Paramount+. Plus. How do they, well, how do you know which ones have the videos back in? Fucking, you just got to scroll through them. You just got to scroll through them. Do you have a purist mentality, and did the uh, digital animation drive you crazy because or do you like oh because they used to be hand drawn and now it's like i haven't looked at any of the people talking about it yeah right out of the gate i was just like fucking this animation looks whack compared to the original stuff this it looks whack i don't hate it but one thing i noticed is as soon as like uh basically at, at the beginning of the movie it basically the movies take place in their own continuity i guess because it's like, oh, now the that newer uh, season didn't happen. So it's like, oh, now we're jumping back to like a little bit after, uh, you know, do America. It's back in the, and then like fucking, they, they end up in the future uh, throughout, uh, through some hijinks. They go to space. Fucking, uh, <laughs> could I, <laughs> probably, could, the, probably my ahead. favorite part of the movie is where the, they're going to space for some reason. Yeah. Do the universe. They did the universe for like. Ten, five minutes but anyway <laughs> but but as far as the means of getting them in the modern day it, it works it's fine but i will say and maybe i'm being nitpicky because in in reality do america probably featured the classic supporting tv show cast just as much because they went on the road so you didn't see principal mcvicker and all these people that much so you only saw these people a little bit in this movie too, so it's probably not fair, but it was a wasted opportunity not to revisit some of these characters in the future in 2022. Principal McVicker, uh, their teacher, Buzzcut, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Like we didn't get to see even a bookend of them like later. That was kind of a missed opportunity. Fucking oh, Dario was there, the original Dario, not Fucking, they, they went back to the Beavis and Butthead version. Fucking, uh, well, because it was like, yeah. yeah, you see those original characters, you're like, fucking, yeah, this is like Beavis and Butthead. The, the animation's a little different, but as soon as they're gone from the movie, every new character you see looks like a completely different, like, art style. Like, it looks like they came from Archer. Remember that? I, show? Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to have seen Todd in 2022. Like, amazing, it, that Todd. was kind of a missed opportunity, but. I think yeah, that, fuck, yeah, a lot the, of the jokes, a lot of the jokes seemed a little, seemed a little off, but it's just like, it's a bunch of new writers and stuff, but it's like, it's fucking abuse of butthead enough. But like, if you watch the show, it's like fucking, a lot of the humor is more kind of subtle and it just is like, fucking wow, they are really dumb. Fucking, I it's think, just fun to watch. but I think, uh, I get it. The story itself is, is not unlike do America where they're just they're They think they're going to do this chick. And that's their whole thing. But I think a, a more fun movie or they could have actually kept the same story and their same end game. But I just I wanted to see them interacting with Highlandville. Right. I mean, or is Highland or Highlandville Highland. Sorry. Highland. Uh, Highland. I would have rather seen that more of them exploring Highland and Mr. Anderson and all these people in 2022. Like, why didn't they show anything like that? That would have been more fun. Like going to the, the gas station, seeing what Todd's up to. All these years later, um, I don't know. There's a lot of missed opportunities. Exactly. Stewart, Morgan. they could add Stewart been like a flaming homosexual 25 years later. 30. It's this funny shit, Chad. you know, funny stuff. Or or Stewart being a total Chad, like you know, like the new the loser that all gets picked on ends up on top later on, totally changes his his appearance and is, gets all the money, and now he's got all the chicks. They could have did something with that, right? I didn't hate it, fucking. I gave it a six, and here's the thing: I was, I was like, is it better or worse than fucking Do America? I actually think uh, Do America is like a seven out of ten until the third act. I think once they get to Washington, it's just like we needed, like he needed to go full on like 
out of the we needed something like fucking oh yeah well, we're gonna call back to like the first uh, the second season when we were still uh, getting away with doing like really crazy shit they're gonna get to the white house there's gonna be people painting the white house they're gonna huff the paint and they're gonna get stoned and they're gonna do something crazy in the white house and then maybe maybe they're just so dumb that nobody even notices they're there but like yeah obviously they can't get too in too much trouble because like the, the, it has to end a certain way like they can't die or anything. but like I think something like that needs to happen, but I always just thought the the third act just kind of dropped the ball a little bit for mm-hmm. me. What do you think of Smart Beavis, Smart Butthead? I, I thought they could have been they they could have done more with that fucking. Uh, I guess, I guess it kind of pays off because it's like they don't seem that smart. <laughs> Well, and they, they, they even say that, like, even by <laughs> just because we're smart, be smart, but we're still like the dumbest people on our planet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that worked. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, well, what, what it, else? Just, it felt felt way more cheap, but it was just like, obviously it wasn't shot on film or anything. It doesn't need to be shot on film. It's just, yeah, fucking, it just, it felt different, but, uh, I was kind of like, uh, they were talking about, I saw uh, stuff in the news, like fucking, they were talking about like, oh, now, now they got to do more than just music videos. They got to watch TV. And I was like, oh yeah, they were talking about that with the last time they brought them back. But like, fucking, are they already working on a new show? Because there's no music video reacting or anything in this movie. They ought, they must not well, have been talking about this. And you know what though? That would have, that's even kind of a missed opportunity. I guess they didn't really talk about music in Do America. They were focused on a narrative, but Beavis and Butthead is in 2022. I wish they would have given us them more reaction to the modern day other than an iPhone. You know, because there wasn't much. Like, what if they would have saw, like, YouTube and or they would have saw these TikTokers or they would have saw modern music uh, or they would have saw, like, ACDC and Metallica and saw them even older. I, just something. Just comment that, on the time. It has to be, like, maybe they're thinking about making it a, you know, kicking it off to make a new reboot. Or they're in modern day. I would. I don't know if is it better to see them as kids now or just to see them like as adults now. I don't know which would be. I <laughs> thought we were gonna have adult Beavis and Butthead, uh, but which would have been kind of fun. But is this the first we'd ever hear about Beavis's mom? Because they actually mentioned acknowledge he had a mom. And uh, yeah, I always just seem like, oh, are they living on their own? They're like fifteen, and they're just living because you never see any parents. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, it was Beavis's mom's house that they were living in that whole time. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I kind of like the mystique of just them living alone and them getting away with that and somehow <laughs> supporting themselves on uh, Burger World, <laughs> you oh, know, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. And then uh, I watched Dog Pound, baby. Watch the Dog Pound. Okay, oh. so so we'll go into my list. We'll we'll cap it off and we'll talk on Dog Pound. We'll seg into that. But my list, some of the stuff, same stuff as Zach, so I won't recap. I won't go over that stuff again. Uh yeah, I don't know how your list on on Letterbox works, but mine seems to expire after a month. So my stuff only goes back like June fourth, right? Thirty days, mm. four weeks. Anyway, so that's all I have to say. But I haven't had the most eventful month. I think I've watched less than I have uh, in a long time. But I'll just so I don't forget about them, I'll talk about the series stuff. I finished Tokyo Vice on HBO. I really really enjoyed that. It's um. You know, it's about a kid from the Midwest, went to Mizzou in Columbia, Missouri, and he moves to Japan and gets a job as an investigative reporter for their biggest newspaper. And, you know, he starts drudging up shit with the Yakuza and kind of gets sucked into that whole thing. And uh, it's got a really big Japanese supporting cast. Uh, I hate you know, when Ken, that happens, Ken, by the way. I hate when that happens. What? Oh, yeah. When that happens, when everybody. Yeah. Uh, Ken Watanabe, he plays a Japanese detective in it, which he's a big deal. You know, he's an in Inception. He's in Last Samurai and uh, all that stuff. But it's it's great. I really, really enjoy it. I can't wait for season two of that. And uh, just started The Boys uh, season three, which I am like three episodes deep, maybe four. It's awesome. I love The Boys. I really miss the show. And uh, I'm going to be sad when the season's over, but it got renewed for season four. Have you seen it yet? Season three? I have not. You haven't have seen not. season two, have you? I have. Okay. Yeah, it, it's great. It's been awesome so far. I gotta say, the actor who plays Homelander is so fucking funny. He's 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 really a good actor, and he's full batshit in this season. Like it's all building up and building up, and he's just he gives the best expressions, <laughs> like this bitch face and that kind of passive aggressive smiling. You know, uh, everything about it, he like every time he's in a scene. He doesn't have to say anything, and he's chewing up the scene. It's it's fucking hilarious. I, I think this he's is, great. 
This is not ironically probably the most realistic interpretation of how superheroes would be utilized in the modern it's, age. It's funny. It's really cool. And between him and his sort of antithesis counterpart, Butcher, uh, he's awesome as well. Uh, so I, I think it's all really cast really well, and I, I enjoy it. Uh, but and then that that's it for series, I think. Uh, of course, I saw Top Gun Maverick about a month ago. Eight out of ten. Hate the original. This one blew me away, especially in IMAX. It was really, really great. I'm looking forward to watching that uh, when it comes out for home release. I, of course, Nosferatu the Vampire as well. I gave that an eight out of ten. I watched eight out of ten for for <laughs> really. You gave it an eight out of ten that high of what for, fucking, for uh, Maverick? Yeah, awesome. Fucking. Uh, you know what? I I actually adjusted it. I gave it a nine out of ten at first. So, because I, because I, I wanted it to. I was gonna wait to see how it is if I watched it again. But honestly, as far as the theatrical experience, dude, nine or I gave me a nine out of ten at least. I, I saw it, it was filmed in IMAX, and it was something to behold. And it was just about all practical effects, dude. You feel you felt like you were in the cockpit with Tom Cruise. Like I, you started feeling like you were going down, and you had that claustrophobic. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was awesome. Really, really good. It was a really good blockbuster. It was a blockbuster like they used to come out with uh, in the 80s and early 90s. That kind of stopped. So I liked it. I, I, I caught a glimpse of myself looking down like this with these fucking headphones on in front of the smartphone. It's like, uh, fucking, I, dude, I look fucking, I look dope. I look hard as fuck. But anyway, Top Gun Maverick is, it's sort of a, a, a benchmark for how you make a cash in sequel like 30 fucking years later 40 35 years later 36 however 36 years later that's how you do it because it somehow topped the original which i hate the original but even a lot of people like the original say it topped the original and uh it still feels like top gun it's better in every way but it still feels like top gun even though it's 36 years later it feels like a sequel um it doesn't feel cheap i don't know they just they just hit it out of the park but uh, like I said, Nosferatu to the Vampire, 8 out of 10. For some reason, I watched Sonic the Hedgehog 2 because it was streaming on Prime. And I, I watched the first one a while, a long time ago. Ooh, this man. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a falling asleep movie. Um, but you know what? It was on par with the first one. It's not for me. It, it's a kid's movie. When I look at it as a movie that's being made for kids, I'd say it's a 6 out of 10. But it's not really, you know, it's, it's Jim Carrey light. He's basically acting like g-rated uh ace ventura you know but there he is he's kind of charming to see on screen i guess Candyman, six out of ten like i said um what else we got here oh joe bob shit did you okay as far as the current season of joe bob i watched hellbender did you watch that fucking uh i haven't yet i don't think i think hellbender. i'm in the minority because i was looking at the reviews after i posted my reviews and uh, let's see, most people seem to fall between seven to eight or six to eight, which is pretty good. And I know Joe Bob was saying nice things about it because it was made on like a shoestring budget. I don't know what it was. I gave it a four out of 10. It bored me to fucking tears. I think four out of 10 was was nice, but it just bored me. It's like the whole thing is made by a, a, a mother, daughter and husband team, a family. And they're even. Yeah. And it's just I guess what they did with it was a lot, but. It just bored me. Uh, I went on a mini marathon of all of the uh, James Bond, Daniel Craig flicks. So I literally, just, we literally watched one a day until we got through all of them. Cause I had never really Ew. watched. Them. I, I enjoyed them. I was never attracted to James Bond movies, but I watched casino Royale. I mean, they're all pretty consistent except for the second one, which turns out everybody shits on because it was during the writer's strike. And you can tell, but the first one, Casino Royale, 8 out of 10. Quantum of Solace, the second one, 6 out of 10. But then from there, it's just Skyfall, 8 out of 10. Spectre, 8 out of 10. Uh, no Time to Die, 8 out of 10. They were consistent, fun action movies. We need uh, the Mac and Zach, No Time to Came. No Time to Came. <laughs> no Time to Came. That's <laughs> no time to even no time to come is funny. That's like a James Bond movie. If it's came, they can't fucking say that it's dirty though. Fucking that's technically not grammatically correct. Fucking you don't know what I'm saying. There. I watched that movie Where the Heart Is with Ashley Judd and Natalie Portman. You ever see that movie? Fucking, I don't think so. It it it's just really batshit. On on the surface, it looks like a a shitty late '90s date movie, like date movie rom com, like a woman would like, but. 
is a six out of ten, but it is just so fucking weird. Like the shit that's in this movie, um, it goes right by. It it's not a slog, which is good, but it's just all over the fucking place. I don't know if in a bad way or in a good way or what, but I just it's just fucking weird. Um, you know, from mm-hmm. from from uh, I don't know. It's like it straddles the line of dark humor sometimes, but I can't tell what it's trying to be. But it's it's pretty weird. Them uh, fucking them Ashley Judd jugs. Yeah, she doesn't show them in this movie. I know she's show them a lot. I, last, uh, I of course watched Beavis and Butthead as well. I gave it a six out of ten. And then uh, the last movie I watched was Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness that is now streaming on Disney Plus. And I um that one is directed by Sam Raimi, and it's the first Sam Raimi movie in a while. And uh, I was I was interested because I had heard people went and saw it, and it was like a horror movie. Like, what the fuck is this? And I think and people were shitting all over it. And uh, I saw it and I'm like, you know, I don't know. I didn't hate it. It was fucking weird because it did not feel aesthetically. It looks like a Marvel movie. You see the trailers. You see the Marvel characters. Oh, it's a Marvel movie. It's got CGI. But when you watch the movie, it's paced like a horror movie. Like there's a whole bunch of the movie that's straight up slasher. It's like literally like a slasher. And he's got all the Sam Raimi touches. There's Dutch angles, zoom in shit, uh, first person shit. And uh like I said, you have the bad guy, which is actually Scarlet Witchness, and it's straight up slasher. You know, like there's the, the way that it's shot, like running down hallways. There's even a jump scare or two. Um, so it was kind of weird. I felt like I was in Bizarro World. Uh, so I actually liked it. I gave it a 7 out of 10. I thought it was fun. But what a lot of people note, and I agree, is that it's very noticeable that it's a Sam Raimi movie, but it's also very noticeable that it's a Sam Raimi movie that he did not write himself. So it seems like there's a miscommunication in that regard because um, the story is a little bit all over the fucking place, especially with like multiverse shit like that. It's kind of a feast of the eyes. It's fun to watch, but just you're going to, you're just going to be a little lost on some shit. So just enjoy like the shit you're getting and the shit you're seeing and the way it's shot and stuff like that. It's really neat, I guess. But uh yeah, people are like, yeah, the story, it probably would have been different if Sam Raimi directed it himself. And I can also tell that whoever wrote it was like, that's probably not the way they intended the movie to be. Like, <laughs> like the way they probably wrote it was a certain way, and then they gave it to Sam Raimi. It's like, what the fuck did you do to my movie? <laughs> you, you turned it into Marvel Evil Dead. Uh, and it's even pretty mm-hmm. violent for a Marvel movie. I mean, it's still PG-13, but there's gore in it. Like, there's like a like, disembowelment, a fucking decapitation. <laughs> like, they kind of push it. If if they got mad at that, I'd be like, you came to me, what, you want me to, you want to hire me and just make, make a Marvel movie? I made a Marvel Evil Dead movie, of course. Fucking, uh, you can hire anybody else to just make a Marvel movie. And people are, some people were disappointed because they got their hopes super high, uh, because they're like, they, I guess they felt underwhelmed because like they could have did more because we're talking about the multiverse. You can literally throw in anything. Like people really thought like, well, you, they could even throw Ash in there because it's all bets are off. You know, you're splitting universes. And so I think people set their expectations way too high and they got disappointed and I could see that. So, but when you watch the movie, it's like, yeah, I guess they could have fucking, they could have jumped into Mr. Rogers neighborhood. I mean, they could have did anything, but like when you set the ceiling that high where there's no ceiling, yeah, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, and Bruce Campbell does have a cameo in it. And it's pretty funny. And it kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, he doesn't play Ash, but uh <laughs> You know, it was entertaining. I I thought it was worth a watch, and I don't know if Zach can hear me or not. But what happened? Fucking, I was trying to grab something, but I fucking can't find it now. Last thing I'll say though, there's a whole sequence in the movie where Doctor Strange has to possess. (laughs) It even has possession. He possesses the corpse of another universe version of himself and it digs up for the ground and he possesses this corpse of himself that's all rotted away and it looks straight out of something of evil dead 2 or like one of the army of darkness right straight out of evil dead 2 so, crazy motherfucker n- named, named uh, uh, seven hand yeah anyway so it's it's worth uh it's worth a watch out of curiosity because it kind of reminds me of like a fanfic like hey what if sam raimi crossed and did a marvel movie that's just it's just fucking weird but anyway i will never watch that because i already had to watch so much shit before it no, <laughs> I, 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 fucking it well the thing is no you really don't you really don't with this one but the the, the only thing that i guess connects to this one is wandavision and i didn't watch that bullshit 
but you really don't have to. You pretty much get it. Like, okay, you, 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 Wanda has Scarlet Witch. She has kids. And at the end of WandaVision, I guess the twist was she dreamt it. She was like creating a fictional reality of her and these like uh, June and Ward Cleaver fucking happy family. And none of that's real. That's really all you need to know. And this is just like a straight up horror movie. So it's, it's just fucking bat shit. But anyway, um, no Spider-Man, no fucking Iron. Nobody else is in this movie. It is what it is, but uh, that's okay. fine. I would rather them not be. Yeah, it, no, it's pretty don't isolated. Even ha- don't even have Doctor Strange in there. For yeah. all I care, that'd be no, really funny. It's it's yeah. That'd be f- <laughs> <laughs> no, and Ash just. No, I, you know what I thought they were gonna do? I thought, oh man, my my fan hopes, and I and I realized they didn't do this because I got spoilers before I ever saw it. But I, when they announced this movie and Sam Raimi was doing it, I'm like, man, wouldn't that be funny? Is he gonna go into like a universe where? Bruce Campbell plays a version of Doctor Strange, like some fucking wacky fucking 1970s doctor. That would have been funny. But no, all the versions of Doctor Strange are, are they're all played by the same actors. So that that went out the window. But Bruce Campbell is funny in it uh, when when he when he shows up. But anyway, that's all we got as far as what we've watched. So we're going to take a small break as per usual. And when we get back, we're going to talk about pounding some animals, pounding some dogs, canines, dog pound. All right, be back in a moment. Did you make this? No. Gentlemen, strip out of your civilian clothes and place all of your belongings in the box with your name on it. All of your belongings. Shake your hair, wiggle your fingers, spread your toes, blow your nose. Welcome to Enola Vale Youth Correctional Facility. Butch, bet on the far left. Dave, straight ahead. Angel, right here. Judge may have given you a sentence, but in reality, your sentence all depends on your behavior. No weapons. Ah! No sharp items. No pornographic material. No illegal substance. No tobacco. No alcohol. And no signs of gang activity will be permitted in the facility of Enola Vale. Right now, you're all level one. Evaluations will determine for us whether you actually want to change and rehabilitate. Slipped and fell. But if you refuse to cooperate, I have no choice but to isolate you. So let's go, you and me. Come on, throw down. We're back. Okay, so welcome back. We are going to be talking about Dog Pound. What's this? Everything, everywhere, all at once. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I got this. I picked this up. It's that fucking uh, Walmart exclusive. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And I was singing it like the fucking uh, everything, (laughs) everything else. (laughs) Did you? So you liked it that much? I fucking I liked it that much. Really? So it's exclusive. Fucking thirty bucks, thirty bucks. Is it a steel book or nah? It's not. Okay. Well, so but the movie's that good, so I should watch it. Fucking, it's worth it. Kojima esque. Kojima esque. Okay, rock on. Well, we're gonna talk about Dog Pound. Uh, as per usual, Zach will kind of give the rundown, the bullet points of the story. Um, but it's a good old fashioned lockup movie. But within a within the juvenile detention center setting, so go ahead and start us off. By the way, it's a small production, small Canadian production, I believe. You know, pretty independent flick. 
Dog Pound from 2010. This was actually originally shot as an episode of Degrassi, The Next Generation, where Spinner goes to a juvenile correctional facility, but they decided to just release it as a movie because they figured it would work out uh, all cool like that. But that was the fucking kid from Degrassi. Degrassi, Next Generation, yeah. So you're you're bullshitting on that fact. But yeah, that's the only kid you might recognize. He plays Davis. Uh, yeah, he, he was in Degrassi next generation. That's the only person in this movie that has any kind of like recognizable right face. Do you recognize anybody else? Um, well, again, no one I can think yeah, of. Yeah. And even then, but go ahead. Run us well, through the basically it's about three juvenile delinquents. They're sentenced, uh, to a correctional facility where they encounter gang violence, death, harassment from staff and other inmates. Baby, did, were you, did you know that this is actually a remake. Yes, I was it um, Canadian or was it British or where where it come? What was the original? Fucking scum. Scum. It was, br- it was a British movie. Fucking. It was remade. Uh, I think it, it was remade as scum at one point too. With this one is called Dog Pound. Fucking. They wanted you to think that it was gonna be some bestiality shit with some dogs and shit, but like it, I, I did uh, because I, I happened to uh, when Aaron picked this movie, I was like, cool. I've been I've had this movie and uh, haven't watched it yet, and, but and I also had Scum, fucking, uh, and I hadn't watched it yet, so I, I went ahead and watched them all and fucking. Oh, you watch you watch Scum as well? I haven't seen Scum. I watched Scum, and this is basically a shot for shot remake. Okay. A, a, a couple changes. I'll, uh, maybe I'll bring up. But Scum, actually, like, it's just as good in, in a big way as, like, I kind of like this one because it's just like, oh, it's more like close to home. And it's just like, it feels because, like, one thing you'll notice about Scum is it's like, oh, the. The the big difference here is like whenever they put their kids in ju- juvenile delinquent homes, it looks like uh like a, a ch- like a children's home. When we do it, it looks it's a fucking cage and it looks like a prison. <laughs> yeah. So basically, <laughs> so that's the biggest thing. But like, yeah, basically, fucking uh, a bunch of shits going down within this and, and scum. Like the fucking the warden is like super like racist and shit too to like uh the kids and like fucking uh. Even like the the, the warden, uh, no one. There's no one to help you, baby. And the, the, did you get to rewatch this, or did you only watch it? Uh, I I watched back? it. For, you know, I it was fresh in mind. I had I didn't get to I didn't get to watch it again, but I watched it in, in the past six months. I remember it pretty well. So it's the main three kids. You have Angel. He's the young one. He's the Latino kid. He's kind of the baby of the group. Uh, Shane uh, Kipple plays Davis. Davis is like. You know, they set up everybody's character at the beginning, right before they're going off to, uh, you know, the juvie hall. And he's kind of what don't they show him slipping in and out of someone's bedroom? He's like getting laid all the time. He's like the ladies man, cocky, whatever, uh, pretty boy type. And, uh, you know, when he gets into the joint, he's telling all his escapades and impressing all the young kids and shit like that. And then you have uh, Butch and Butch is seen almost as the veteran. Right. They look up to him. He's the older kid and he's been through the ropes and he's very stoic. None of the shit's really getting to him, uh, at least on the surface for a while. You know, he's the tough one. But uh, and it's just sort of all about their personal experiences in this place and how each one of them gets broken in their own way. Uh, So, I mean, I don't really know if this is really the kind of movie you really want to do beat by beat because it's fairly simple. Um, Mateo uh, Morales plays Angel. He ends up getting killed by one of the fucking guards because they get super aggressive. It's 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 one of these types of movies and hits him a little too hard. I don't know if he throws him against the wall. I don't quite remember where he hits him, but he doesn't wake up and he gets it. And of course, this guy, the war, he's actually a pretty cool character because he's got his own kids. He's making phone calls. His wife's calling him constantly, nagging him like, are you going to be here for like the the kid's birthday, whatever. He, he, they, they give you a little bit of light on his personal life. And it's interesting because if you worked at a place like that, if you were a security guard working at a place like that, a lot of those people, they do. Um, I know with like a place like Alcatraz and shit like that, those guys work in shifts. Like they stay there for like a month and go home for a month, you know, because it's just so um, impractical to go work a nine to five and leave and come back and leave and come back. But I can understand like why it would be so stressful working at a place like that, surrounded by that 
negative atmosphere every day. But then you have to like learn to turn it off and become family man. Like I have to watch what happens to kids and how animal kids act and beat the sh shit out of each other, do horrible things to each other. And then I have to somehow go back to being a dad. I, the lines would probably start to blur and you could tell this guy was ba balancing his home life, which is probably falling apart and taking his aggressions of that onto the kids here. And, uh, and that's basically all he did, right? He was super on edge because they probably established a scene like with his wife before that. I don't remember, but you know, it established that, Oh, I'm taking my aggressions out. And he hit this angel kid a little too hard and he fucking killed him. Uh, which I believe yeah. probably set Butch off, right? Like he's the one that's really like you motherfucker probably, but okay. he ends up, Butch? they end up, they end up covering it, right? Like covering him and, uh, d or did he actually get investigated? I can't remember actually. Fun fact, the kid that played Butch, that's actually a continuation of Butch from fucking Butch, the Butch and Wayne from fucking, uh, from uh, the Little Rascals movie. That's what happened to him. That's what became of his fate. I I I I wrote down a couple. Uh, you got fries with that shake? Go ahead. Oh yeah, I wrote down a couple <laughs> notes while I was watching the movie. The first one I took, I put, if I was working as a prison guard, I never treat any of the fucking inmates bad just because the possibility of the revolt. You know, at some point it's gonna happen. At some point, one of the guards are gonna leave a key somewhere, and they're gonna the powers is gonna switch over. I want to be on their good side, baby. I'm, I'm gonna be the guy. I'm gonna be the guy that's always like fucking, just like yeah. You you want a drink? I'll give you a drink, man. I'll bring you anything you want, man. And what's <laughs> what's funny though is so let's talk about how each one uh, so gets broken down in their own way. Angel, we already established, she doesn't make it. He's the night. He's a nice kid, right? And um, he's young. He's impressionable. And I, he is. Am I correct? He was sticking up because the guard got. He was. He was fucking uh, on edge from like some phone call he got or whatever. And he was probably roughing up one of the other ones. And I think Angel was kind of like saying, "Hey, man." Right, and then he hit him and kill him or something like that. Whatever. He was just coming to the defense. Okay. Basically, uh, yeah. Uh they were messing around. They drew. They now I'm mixing up which movie was which because I just yeah. watched Scum and the uh, someone. Yeah, they painted a naked girl in both of them. Painted a naked girl and fucking saw it and got in trouble. Uh, fucking uh, and and then the kid bit him as they were like fucking confronting <laughs> and like he threw him against the wall and he hit his head on a pipe and he hit his head on the pipe. Yeah, and he got killed him. Okay, and so. That's, you're you're jumping way towards the end of the movie though. The, the whole it doesn't matter. Oh, go first, ahead. If you, if you want to walk through uh, it. Up until the third act, this the whole movie is basically like, yeah, him playing the game. Basically, this is what all the Fox News pundits were trying to convince our parents that bully was. They're like, fucking, don't buy bully for your kids because it's basically you fucking, you're a bully, and you know the whole goal of the game is to be the the tough bully that goes in and fucking like, hey man, you might you might get money from these drugs, but hey, now fucking, you answer to me, okay? You answer to me. You might get your cup, but you answer to me. That's basically what this whole movie is. He's doing that shit. He's fucking reclaiming. The, the he's he's trying to be the big bad guy. Trying to be the big bad guy. Who are we talking about? Butch? Fucking uh, the one kid. I don't know. One of them. One of the, the three. lead one. Butch, the one that's the stoic one, the skinny guy, the tall. Stoic. What are you talking about? Stoic well, he's the one, one that's like not phased, right? He's like not emotional about everything. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, anyway, so the Degrassi kid. He's probably the most optimistic of all of them once he gets in, right? He's kind of just making the best of his time. He's making friends, talking about sexual escapades. He seems to be pretty easy breezy. And, of course, we know what happens to him. And this wouldn't be an incarceration flick without some rape. And I have to say, I've said it a million times, rape scenes are always very uncomfortable. They're the most uncomfortable things ever in films. I, I don't care what the setting is, <laughs> what, who's involved. They're just always very unsettling. And uh, you kind of almost expect it. You're watching a movie about prison or a, a facility. It's you're just looking at your watch, like, okay, when is the when is the sodomy going to happen? And uh, it's pretty harrowing. And so it's funny how it happens to him. Well, it's not funny because he's the one that talks about what he likes to do with women, and he's the ladies' man. He's talking about all these escapades about sex. So he ends up fucking getting it, and uh, he just kills himself. He just fucking can't take it anymore, and he Shad. just. Uh, Dude, Shad. I mean, he. A, well, we should we should start non ironically like fucking. That's the coolest no. thing. <laughs> no, fucking king. 
King. Okay, it's a movie. We're just joking but, here. And we're jumping around, obviously, because up until then, these couple of dudes are giving him a hard time. And, you know, Butch has his back. Like, you know, he can't really fight. You know, Butch comes in and, like, saves him and, and fends for himself, you know, and, and be. But there's a point where Butch gets locked up, right? And Butch isn't mm-hmm. there to protect him. Is that right? Oh, yeah. And okay. then that's when he's free game and they fucking get him in like the laundry room or something. I don't remember. But why does Butch get locked up again? What makes him inacceptable, inaccessible? What did he do? It, it, was it for, uh, yeah, I he forget. Did, it's escaping did, my mind. He did something that got him put away by himself and uh, it left uh, Degrassi as open game, which is pretty fucking harrowing, of course. And I don't know. Uh, of course, the flick all really builds up to like what Zach was talking about, the big fucking mutiny at the end and the cafeteria and all that shit. And uh, and it's so funny how it happened because it just like erupted. Right. <laughs> and what was uh, what talk about the build up of that, how that came to be, who helped make that happen? I mean, just to kind of gloss over plot. Um, okay, Basically, I, I wrote like a bunch of little things as I was watching the movie. The next one I wrote was. uh. Where'd it go? Fucking it was. I wrote everybody in this movie looks like a juggalo. I put that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember why I wrote that. I don't remember that. But uh, there's that scene. Fucking, we we jumped all over it. Yeah, I, we don't need to go in all these fucking. Uh, we jumped all over because the plot's fairly simple. Kids go into juvenile correctional facility that's crooked. The system's fucked up. They treat the kids like fucking shit. They abuse the kids. And under certain conditions, a lot of these kids are prone to become animals themselves. And a lot of the shit, it's just like every other prison movie, right? They're treated like fucking animals. But exactly. so I lost connection for half a second. Then we had to restart the chat. And it was so funny. I was asking Zach, oh, where were you at again? And I was like, I, I had asked you about like what brought upon the mutiny? Like how'd that get arranged? Like who arranged for, you know, uh, this stuff's usually fuck. Or did he just start it sporadically? And Zach's like, I don't know if I wrote that down. I just kind of wrote. Guy got raped, you know. <laughs> juggalo, like I was like, "Is that your note? Hold up your nose to just say guy got raped. Lots of juggalos about. <laughs> but someone got raped. I don't, I don't bother learning character names because I fucking I don't remember which character's character. Fucking someone got raped. Fucking <laughs> there's three guys. They all look the same. Fucking someone got raped. One's uh, Mexican. <laughs> fucking they're all the same guy. They're all okay. literally the same guy. One guy so, played every role. Did uh, uh, did Butch did Butch have a situation where he was going to get <sighs> this, something? I, I, this place with, was a total sausage fest. That's one of the bad things about the movie. Really, There's just too yeah. much dick going around. It's not chained heat. There, there but, was that one. They had that one teacher uh, that was like a yeah uh, hung out with woman. them and shit. And the one kid was like macking on her, fucking mm-hmm. like fucking. And, and then that that scene where they were doing that shit, they were talking and like. And then the like it all boiled down to like we're fucking like they all just started picking on each other uh, in front of the teacher and it just like fucking just the worst in humanity came out like fucking uh, shitting on each other for fucking uh, trivial shit all that shit uh, great film great film <laughs> so we'll just talk about the ending what did you think about the ending how did it make you feel uh, how did uh, you know what we don't. What do you suspect happened with someone like Butch? You know, he was the one that survived, right? Is he the kind of guy that just stayed in the system or what? But what do you, what's your impressions of the ending? That whole scene it makes you feel this, alive. It makes your heart fucking pump, man. When they start just going fucking nuts in that cafeteria and breaking I, down doors. I think this, this whole movie uh, and, and with scum too, like it's basically like making, it's like making the point like fucking like, uh, yeah, can people really do better when we're putting them in places like this, where this is where they have to survive? Because like, there's a way you have to survive in the in prison, and then whenever you go back to the real world, now it's like uh, both. How do you coming. how how are you coming out rehabilitated when you've been forced to become more hardened, you know, because of mm-hmm. living conditions in prison? Like, how are you supposed to come out better? for that exactly. um and it's all fucked up you could blame it on tax dollars you could blame it on like just where money's going i don't know i i've always wondered i like the the security guard though because it's like yeah it's like that would be like wearing on the soul but i always thought it'd be interesting too because obviously i never want to go to like some hardcore penitentiary but wouldn't it be kind of be interesting for like a week to be able to work as a guard 
Because you, you get to put your feet in both sides. It's like, well, I kind of get to experience what it's like because I get to be on that the, le- the law side of it and I get to see, but I don't have to live it and I can also go home. Yeah, but would we, that be nuts? Would that be nuts to go somewhere like that every day? But eventually it would start polluting your brain a little bit. It would be so fucking negative. Like, I mean, uh, could you, I don't know, man. Like if you, if you broke up a nasty fight and you were seeing guys get stabbed or if you saw a guy get drug away because he got raped in a bathroom or whatever, dude, like you would, that would fuck you up, man. You'd probably, your home life would be fucked up. Your sex life would probably be fucked up. You're fucking just, you'd be emotionally like vacant, I think too as well, right? Everything about you'd be like, I'm just, you know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. That stuff's very unsettling in movies. Like if you had to fucking live it, dude, I don't, I don't know. I think it, uh, you'd have to make a lot of money. You'd have to pay me a lot of money and I'd hope to God those people get a lot of vacation. Exactly. But, unless okay, it's a women's prison and you're a guy working in the women's prison and you get to just like, have, you know, like in all those movies, right? It's usually, it's men, there's usually men and women like guards that are always like just making sex, making the sex with all the female prisoners. <laughs> Uh, they seem I, to have a pretty nice time. I wrote down the drown the the scene where he drowned the cockroach and spit. Fucking there's yeah he was just sitting in his fucking they put him in the hole or something and to entertain himself he was just drowning mm-hmm. a cockroach and spit. We got a scene like that. Like where do you see shit like that? That shit that fucking they don't think of in Hollywood films. They don't think about in Hollywood films. Fucking they don't know that shit. Fucking and did they really have to kill the uh, cockroach for that? Fucking. Probably did. Fucking, is there any PETA people that are like fucking? Did they put no cockroach was harmed? We didn't really drown the cockroach and spit. Nobody cares about cockroaches. Cockroach. We play there. We cockroaches it there. Are, well, like yeah, where does PETA's line drawn? Because obviously it's a big issue if um, a species is on like an extinction watch list. But you're never in a million years like cockroaches. Cockroaches, if anything, they need to be cold. So it's like, do they give a shit about that? Like, there's a million more cockroaches. There's billions of cockroaches left where that came from. They'll be the last ones standing, as they say. I wrote down that scene where fucking uh, Spinner from Degrassi, Next Generation, that show. Did I mention that? You actually watched that show? (laughs) It sounds like you really watched it. I watched watched some of it. I watched some of it. Drake. It it was all right. I was right at the age for that to kind of appeal to. And uh, fucking Spinner from Degrassi, he was talking about fucking uh, whenever he was with the girl and she made him go home. So like he was leaving and then her her big tittied mom who was like, oh, oh, fucking. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, he was just he was telling him a fake story. But everybody was just like, well, this is the only entertainment we have. And they were just like, fucking hell yeah, hell yeah. And it, I, I wrote down, he wrote, she had this dress that just made her titties pop right out. <laughs> <laughs> made her titties Canadians. pop right out. <laughs> I was laughing, and it, it was so fun. It was funny because they were they were showing it through his perspective, so it was like recreating it. It was over like goofy and funny to watch. Very Chad. It was obviously the, what they were visualizing. Very, very, very Kino. That's what a Kino file does when they make. Uh, uh, I forget the girl who directed this, but uh. uh our boy who was on the show, he, he was talking about, uh, he, did he just talk about, uh, did he talk about how he knows her or was he just a fan of hers? Yeah. Randall. Well, I know, I know he likes this movie. He suggested I watch it. I don't think he knows her anyway. Go ahead. What, um, I think, uh, Oh, I wrote down the mix this shit up, mix this shit up. Whenever they're playing basketball, the coach has to like literally make them like mix this. This ain't no race thing. Mix this shit up. We're playing a game here. And he has to like fucking make the white kids go with it. Because they're so used to dividing by race there. Fucking cringe. Cringe. That's all prison too. By the way. That's in both the movies too. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool that they made a movie like this shedding light on the juvie system. Because it's pretty bad, man. And I think I might have said this on the po- on a podcast in the past, but I my mom's best friend when I was a kid, her kid was a troubled youth like this. And he was in and out of trouble all the fucking time. And eventually he got he got the book thrown at him and he got thrown into um this juvenile detention center in uh upstate where we lived, and it was pretty bad. Anyway, I had heard stories, man. I had heard stories, and, and apparently, what? What the fuck are you doing? 
<laughs> I was yeah. just fanning my face with his hot. Oh, it's it's like hurry up, get it over with, get it over with. <laughs> I, I, I knew you would think that, but I was just gonna let you think. That. But what I'm saying right. is though, one day, <laughs> one day he uh, he got raped. I guess he got raped in the pan. Her friend. See, now I feel off. bad for doing it. Now I feel bad. Yeah, for but his he he was this kid that was in and out of trouble. He got thrown into the juvie, and some other older kids fucking punked his ass. And I have always you, wondered whatever happened to that kid. Like, what was his trajectory like? What did that end up doing to him? Was he really reformed, or was he worse? He was probably worse. Um, but you ask you at you fucking you drop that spoiler. That's fucking basically. Uh, him, uh, the rape and everything, it leads to him getting put into a room and then like he, he tries to tell the guards that like he's like, basically he's suicidal and like the fucking the guards are like, fuck you get in there, like whatever and he ends up killing himself that's what leads to the shit at the end, they fucking revolt in his name, in his name fucking you mm. spoiled it really early on, but fucking <laughs> I, I just, we let it we let it slide <laughs> anyway, what was your opinion to the movie overall? What's your rating? Give your final thoughts, Jerry Springer. Steve Wilkos. Fucking both of these movies, Scum and Cum. What's this movie called again? Some Dog fucking Pound. dogs. Dog Pound. Fucking uh they're both eight out of ten. Fucking watch these movies. Both of them. Fucking uh there there's something because like I was saying, I was like fucking uh, you know, this is more like it would be if I went to prison, uh, dog pound because it's like more American. I fucking and and the, and the other one, scum. It's all British and like well, it's Bay Canadian. Shit. But go ahead. And, uh, yeah, this it, it takes place in America in the, the movie. I think they're in a Minnesota juvenile detention uh, hall or something, which, which is their way of getting around the Canadian accents because people in Minnesota kind of do that because it's right on the border. Right. Exactly. So that's their way of skating that. But anyway, yeah, I, I got I have to see scum and uh, I'll watch that sometime here soon because, you know, the story is it's been at least six months. So I, I'll probably get a lot out of watching scum. But uh, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think it was an eight out of ten. Yeah. I yeah, thought it was really, uh, really, really fucking, good. I can hear you. OK, sorry. I got kicked out again. So let's just fucking wrap this up. I don't know what you were saying, but I'm going to I was saying your something fro- that I kind of face out, is so. frozen. What your face is frozen like if you look highly Fuck, regarded I can't hear you. like you look like you look like oh, a Jason shit. Mongoloid. Okay, say whatever you're gonna say. <laughs> Sorry. Basically, the only basically it's a shot for shot remake. It's a lot like Funny Games, where Funny Games was like it's not directed by the same person, but the Funny Games was directed by the same person. It's just an Americanized version, and it made sense to do it because it's a, it's a very American story, and it's kind of tapping into like the stuff Americans want to see in movies. So the message worked even better. So like with this one, basically it's a shot for shot remake, and uh. Uh, if you watch one, it's like it's not necessary, completely necessary to watch the other one, but it's just like fucking. Uh, uh, they complement each other really well, and uh, they're different. And uh, uh, scum, in in many ways, it goes uh, fucking even more like uh, brutal because like does it in 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 dog pound like we see him when he's suicidal and he lets them know like fucking. Like uh, I want to call my mom, and they're just like fucking go to sleep. We just cut to the aftermath the next day. We actually. We fucking watched the kid pull, pull pull a razor out that he found, and fucking just it, it's so fucking hard to watch. Like fuck, you don't even yeah. see a lot, but it's just like holy shit. Well, and so that's what I was also gonna say. This movie is an eight out of ten for me. I gotta watch Scum, but as much as I really like the movie, this is not the kind of movie I want to watch over and over and over again because it's hard to watch, especially now. Even though like it's it's a prison movie, so you kind of know the tropes you're gonna see. You're just kind of waiting for it. But now that I definitely know what's coming, it's like, man, I don't know if I can watch this. It's just it's just tough to watch. And, uh, yeah, that whole thing with uh, Degrassi and his whole fates and everything else. And, yeah, that's right. The scene where he just wants to call his mom, right? That's mm-hmm. sad. And it's, uh, it's just really, really, really tough to watch. But I guess that also makes a good movie because it earns your third act. It earns your justification. And it has you rooting for their their uprising and all that shit. You know, I mean, so it's a uh, it's an emotional payoff, but yeah, it's just it's just real tough to watch. But I'll go ahead and uh, mention the uh, the the ending for Dog Pound. I liked because it's literally like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre ending, but like from the point of view of like 
<laughs> like technically, technically, the you like you're hoping the kid gets out at the end because like, but but then it's like he's caught by technically the cops, but kind of they're in the wrong here. But they're both in the wrong. It fucking it is uh, well done. I liked it. I liked it, and it's um. Uh, I don't think there's too 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 many. There's tons of prison movies, but I don't think there's a whole lot representing the the juvie hall can you think of any other ones technically bad boys with sean penn is technically a juvenile detention center even though all those fuckers look about 30 <laughs> but you've seen bad boys right mm -hmm. bad boys is another one i'd say that's another one i mean just because there's not that many but i love bad boys and i haven't seen that in a minute but we used to watch it all the time when i was younger my mom really liked that movie we always had it it was one of the first dvds we got when we got a dvd player too but i had on vhs but i would like to do that movie sometime that's got a great cast. Got Clancy Brown. Which Clancy Brown? We're supposed to believe Clancy Brown's in a juvie detention center. Oh, he, yeah. he he literally looked like he was you know thirty five. You got Eastside Morales, man. Uh, so maybe that one will be down the pipeline eventually. But all right. So we both agree it's a it's a solid great movie. Uh, I would like to own it. I don't think it's gonna be the kind of flick. It's if I ever find it on DVD, it's probably my only shot at owning it. But. Anyway. Fuck, you gotta get the whole collection. You gotta get the fuck. You gotta get this, and you gotta get the Degrassi Next Generation box set. And you put this right, fucking right in the right after fucking uh, Spinner. Uh, he right before he hits his growth spurt. Basically, he was really chubby at the beginning. And then like fucking, they, they came back for the next season. All of a sudden, he was taller and a skinny kid. He had blonde hair. Who's your favorite character in the slick? And does that align with the scum version too, or does it? You know what I mean? Like, is your necessary favorite? character the same in both versions or is it different for different reasons are they played the same fucking uh the one of the characters in scum and one of the three characters is like uh i think he's one of the three characters or he's he's a, a character he's like super like uh intellectual type like he fucking really w w well read and shit fucking he's trying to get him like fucking i want you to i want you to like open up the shit so i can read literature i want to i want to read literature he's talking like he's talking, i want to read literature he's doing fucking uh shakespearean talking talking things he's just talking like all these big boy words and shit that i don't remember now but then like fuck so i don't remember him in the old one fucking, i'm pretty sure he's a little different fucking they're both they're both really good they're both really good movies but who's your favorite character is what i said who's who's <laughs> I, I probably would have said that was probably the most interesting one that guy because it was just like he's like a fucking ted bundy type of guy and uh fucking in this movie i have to go with spinner because like fucking it's spinner dude yeah fucking he's so chad <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was cringe very very cringe um and I, and I can't help when I see you doing that, when you're especially when you mix it with the fact that your face looks like that old, like, meme of the orange with lips and eyes talking. <laughs> it, it's just, it looks really weird. But anyway, all right, so we're going to leave you guys with that. Uh, next time will be Zach's choice. Um, uh, do you have any ideas what you want to do for your next one? We I can make it interesting. Make it, we still haven't done Another Day in Paradise, by the way. And I still, I've been holding on to it, not watching it. Okay. I've never seen Bully or Another Day in Paradise, just FYI. So I'll oh yes. So just you know, let us know what you want us to do next, and we'll do that. But that's all we got. Is there what do we need to plug? Mac and Zach, Kane Gang. We did some new stuff with that. We did uh, a Beavis and Butthead tribute, right? Where we uh, each Mac, yourself, me, we each picked five music videos, and we pulled a Beavis and Butthead man, and we just kind of yeah. commentated over them, talk bullshit. That's ready to come out. Fucking today or tomorrow. I forgot to put it out today. I could put it out tomorrow or something. Fucking As of this out. recording, if you're listening to this recording, it's already out then. Exactly. Fuck, we we are officially the Came Gang. Fucking, we pulled the fucking plug from the beginning. Fucking, whenever the show first came out, we were playing it more straight. Like, fuck, we were just being ourselves. And then it, it slowly became fucking, uh, we, we became the cartoon characters. And then it's like, fucking, now it feels weird to have our real names. Mixed with these weird cartoon characters. Fucking, uh, so fucking, uh, let's be Kame Gang. Let's be Kame Gang. Fucking, basically, we, we picked the name. It's a new era. It's a new era. Fucking, it's the NWO Kame. of the, of, of, of Revival House. Exactly. Exactly. Zach has gone Hollywood Hogan. Exactly. We got a new logo and shit coming out. 
fucking all that <laughs> shit. And whenever, whenever, basically, whenever I was coming up the wall, fucking, well, I'll release it at some point and fucking, oh, I'll talk about it. It was really crazy. It was almost like fucking a fate how it all worked out. Like the name came gang and like fucking Mac and Zach say the word. It was, it's crazy. Fucking hot to show you sometimes. It's magical. It's beautiful. Okay, so be on the lookout for that and some rebranding uh, as he's saying it. Our last BTM commentary was the Mrs. Doubtfire. We'll, we'll have another one of those up next after this. And then uh, we also did, as far, part of BTM, we just did a, a video of our 99 top video games of all time, split three ways between myself, Zach, and, and Mac. That was a lot of fun. That's up as well. Um, and if you want to support us, please, 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 Leave a like and a comment on the video. It's going to help us out tremendously in the algorithms. And also, uh, please follow us and leave us good feedback on podcast free feeds. We we are recording this on the 4th of July. You can hear fireworks going on right now. We I need to finish it. this so I can run the fuck outside and celebrate. Uh, well, I'm wrapping it up. I'm wrapping it up. And also, if you guys want to support us extra, we have a Teespring where we have uh, merch, swag, apparel you could uh, rock. And also, they, you they, want to know? You want to know what I'm going to do to celebrate? What are you going to do to celebrate? I'm going to fucking, I'm going to take a big fucking inhale of crack smoke and blow it into a small child's face. I double dare you. (laughs) And we have a Patreon. If you want this uh, show and other shows and all shows early accessed, uh, as well as bonus content, exclusive content. Zach, we have to start season two of Ash vs. Evil Dead. We've got the first uh, season of Evil Dead commentary, Ash vs. Evil Dead, up there exclusively for patrons. Um, if you want all that in other ways, just please look at the links below and check out our Patreon, and you could support us at even $2. Price of a coffee goes a long way. Uh, but that's all we got. We're going to let Zach go blow his crack smoke in a kid's face. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I stole that joke from uh, Eric Andre stand-up special. Okay, it's not going to mean anything. It's not July Fourth as as of the moment people are hearing this. But hope you guys had a nice July Fourth, and we'll catch you guys later. Oh, by the way, by the way, just just FYI, you guys are going to be none the wiser. But there might be a couple of weeks where I'm not available to stream because uh, starting uh, next week, the week after July 4th, I'm not, I'm not free because I got company coming in that I'm going on vacation. I'm going to Florida until Mm. the following week, but I will have a whole week off when I get back as well. Cause I'm taking about 16 days off. So Zach and I will have to knock some content out in that week, right? Do a couple of streams, knock some, knock some evil dead, uh, come 10 off for the Patreon and, uh, probably another commentary, but to, to be determined. All right, guys, be safe. Blow crack smoke in kids' faces. <laughs> Bye-bye, puppets. I'm going to fucking snort a, a, a rock of crack the, the size of a small dog's head. Bible house. Twine. Mmm. That sounds like fire. Like this country used to. <laughs>